and I have a program called Simply Hover. It's not letting it fall. Whoa, we're not flying, we are falling. Uh-oh, bombs away. I am super de duper de pleased with this. Hello, my name is Mike Gaben and welcome to my KSP campaign. If we take a look here at the uh, building bays in the vehicle assembly building, you can see I got a couple of crafts going. I got Moonar 1. Now, Moonar 1, obviously, target is the moon. And, well, that's a significant jump from what you've seen so far in this series where I've barely gotten out of low carbon orbit. But that is going to be, well, my main event from this episode. I also got in here the Octo 2. Uh, yeah, that's a relaunch of a failed mission from last episode. Yeah, we won't talk about it anymore. You'll see that too very, very shortly. But... Another thing I want to draw attention to right now is that I've got nothing cooking in the space plane hangar, but got this, uh, where is it here? This glider, rocket glider. I was originally thinking of actually making this suborbital, but then I noticed have a command seat. So you gotta have a command seat and then make a glider, have no engines at the end and have a rocket at the beginning. So we'll get in the space plane hangar and we'll, we'll build that just to get something building in the space plane hangar and actually I got something else I want to show you just really briefly I mean last episode we all saw yeah that doesn't matter there we go our VTOL here um <laughs> which I why is it that landing on the moon or min miss or something like that I don't seem to have too much trouble with but doing powered landing somewhere else does but what I want to show, I'm going to take the command seat off for now because I'm right at the 30 part limit. I'm pretty sure, yes, I was. I was at the 30 part limit until I took the command seat off. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a probe core on here. There we go. And I'm going to show you just a little script that I was playing with. So this is going to be a very brief simulation. All right, so we'll bring up our. Uh, KOS script, our KOS terminal here. Uh, we'll switch to the archive. And I have a program called Simply Hover. This is a work in progress. I don't want to run it just now. Uh, but what it does is it actually calculates what the force of gravity is on this and what's the appropriate amount of thrust to. Uh, keep you keep it in the same altitude and it keeps adjusting so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get up and then we'll slow down a little bit and I'm gonna come here I'm just gonna hit hover and it should now it is going up a little bit because I had a bit of momentum but you can see it's slowing down and it sh actually if you start tilting a little bit it keeps this thing has very little reaction wheel control. It's part of the reason why it's very easy to lose control. It should still keep that sort of same, you know, not letting it fall. Even though we're losing the vertical component of thrust when I do this, like because now the thrust is actually increasing the thrust a little bit to try and keep the hover mode going. And then when I go like this, it should decrease the thrust a little bit. Let's just try this one more time. We'll, so I'll pitch this way. You see it's increasing the thrust just a bit, and then I'll come back and it decreases the thrust. It's a really, really simple program. What I need to do is put in some additional controls so that if you want to decrease the thrust a little bit to, or increase the thrust a little bit to ascend or descend, because right now, because like if I hit shift or control, I have no control of thrust. I only have control of attitude. So you can see this is helpful, but it's still a work in progress. I want to put in some control so I can tell the hover command to lower altitude or raise altitude. Um, I think I'm going to need action groups for that. So that's still, i got to upgrade the space plane hangar for that to work. Um, just to show you here, we'll, we'll abort this. It also has no way to end it other than to do this abort. Oh, it put the thrust back to what it was thing is going to run out of fuel and die. Uh, it's really simple. Let's just show it to you while we... For. 
Sorry, I'm watching my thing here and saying it's decreased thrust a little bit. Um, painfully simple. Down here. Um, it has a thrust setting variable. Locks the throttle to this thrust setting, which starts at zero. I have an infinite loop here, says until false. Uh, calculates the force of gravity, really simple, 9.8 times the mass of the vehicle. And because the mass is continually decreasing, it keeps updating that because it's in this infinite loop. And then it calculates the angle to the, um, uh oh, we ran out of fuel. <laughs> the angle to the vertical is what this is calculating here. Uh, this is the vector. I don't know what that's about. KCT vector vessel recovery complete. Okay, I don't know what's going on there. Um, this is calculating the way the vessel is facing and this is the up vector and it's calculating the angle between them and then it sets the thrust and notice that when you divide by the cosine of the angle it's actually just calculating the the how much thrust you need to just do the vertical component even though they're at an angle to each other and that's all it does so work in progress boom oops not even a boom that's kind of disappointing so let's get rid of this Okay, rocket sled, rocket sled, rocket sled, rocket sled. Actually, I got these reaction wheels, but these are the little... I'm going to try these ones. These are the small reaction wheels. They're little. They're weaker. I think they're half the... Yes, they're exactly half the strength, but a little more than half the mass of the more familiar small inline ones. But what's nice is that they're a radial part. And I could put, like, you can get them close to where the center of mass is. Yeah, I kind of like that. Well, let's take a look at our contracts, make sure I'm not missing. So it says, make a rocket glider, have a volunteer, have a command seat, have wings. Do these count as wings? I'm not sure they do. I'm not sure these count as wings. Okay, so what we're going to do... We're going to stick my smallest booster on the back of it. Now yeah, we'll see what happens. We'll simulate this, see what happens. I think in the staging, I'm going to have to fire that rocket, get it spooled up, because if, if I just, I don't want it to just drop. Might be better to go perfectly vertical, but we'll see. So this is a rocket sled. All right. Uh, do we have a volunteer? We need a volunteer. Oh, all my pilots are gone. Oh, Bill. <laughs> None of my pilots are available. Okay. Uh, what the heck? Okay, simulate. Let's see what happens. All right. Uh, I don't think I have SAS. No. <laughs> oh, this is going to be bad. Oh, he's going up. He's going up. He's out of control. He's out of control, folks. And into the ground. Okay, that was pretty brief, but... <laughs> uh, oh, 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 oh! Bill! Nicely done. Okay. So I need a, f a pilot to become available. Oh, wait, I can just put a probe core on this thing. Why don't I just put a probe core on this thing? Oh, let's see what happens. <laughs> now Bill has SAS. Okay, put that on chase. And, uh, boom. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, that wasn't Bill's fault. Oh, did that count, by the way? <laughs> Why is that one wheel... Oh, I gotta stop. Brakes. That might actually count. That's that'd be stupid. Oh, it didn't call. I it said I did not get airborne. I got airborne. Okay, let's. We're gonna restart that. All right. So this was a staging mishap. So engines first, and then that SAS on. Okay. Do 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 do. And. There he goes, he's up, he's up, he's up, 
I'm airborne now, right? How can this not be airborne? Wow, this is not... Whoa! Okay. Oh, I don't have... I don't have a decoupler to get rid of that booster. What a what a dingle door. And I think I'll switch out those little reaction wheels for the standard small reaction wheels while I'm at it. This is the one, Bill. All right, and stage, and go. There he is, off we go. And keep going up. Oh yeah, that of course is gonna keep doing that as you put less fuel in. So, oh yeah, batteries. Whoa, we're not flying, we are falling. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'm being too minimalistic. All right. Uh, <laughs> all right. Terminate the simulation. We're going to build something bigger. Build something bigger. Probably didn't get up to enough of a speed either. I'm sure that didn't help Bill out. Now we most certainly have proper wings. There, put the that on. All right, get airborne. And boom. hold it, Bill. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Pitch, 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 pitch. We need speed. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. I think I don't have enough thrust. Oh, this thing is so difficult to control. <laughs> Woo! And stop. <laughs> okay, this doesn't count because we were in simulation mode, but that is absolutely hysterical that that, that completed the contract. Um, <laughs> Not more thrust. I think this will make this work. Heck, maybe we'll make Bill the actual pilot when we do this for real. It's got SAS, so why not? Why not indeed? Off he goes. Come on, Bill. Hang on to it. Why do we do the loop-the-loops? That's a good question. Of course, the center of lift is well forward of the center of mass. So that, oh, that could put some tail fins on the booster. Oh, for goodness sakes. That's all I need to do. That, that, that will solve all of this. There we go. That's got her. Now we'll just pick up some speed. No. That, okay. I got weight. Okay. Who's that? Fly. Whoa. <laughs> oh, we're flying. We're flying. Rocket sled batteries are almost empty. Let's put some batteries on it. Batteries are empty. Okay. Batteries and this guy will be happy caducally. Even without the reaction wheels, Bill... You are an awesome rock star. I could probably put this on to... Look at this thing. Oh my gosh, I want one. Everybody else is jealous of... Uh-oh, we're falling. We've lost too much speed. Oh, 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 that was almost there. Okay, this is clearly just a few tweaks away from working. And uh, once I put it into the building queue, it only takes three and a half days to build. So you'll be seeing it later in this episode. But enough farting around in simulation mode. It's time to do something for real. Okay, Octo 2. All right, so this is the exact same Octo 2 you saw last episode. Where is the contract? There is a contract to take this one. It's just simply to, to stage the the um, the fairing at an altitude in orbit at an altitude of over 370, well, between 370 kilometers, 380 kilometers. I'll bring up our KOS terminal. We'll do an ascent. This one failed simply because I didn't put a battery on it. That's never, ever, ever gonna happen again. <laughs> we'll see. 
I'll come up with other... There'll be other things that will happen. That one shouldn't happen. We are going inclination of zero, and we're going to shoot for an altitude. Let's call it 380. I'm going to go straight to Apoapsis. And I'm not sure if this is the best way to do it, but it's the quickest way to do it. <laughs> All we have to do is just bring our periapsis out of the atmosphere. And it doesn't have much to go. You know what I should do? Because this is pretty close to the exact orbit, there we go, that I had last time. Okay, let's stage that fairing and I'll talk about what I talked about. Uh, let's stage. Stage fairing. There we go. Contract complete. Yeehaw. Okay, so that's done. <laughs> that was followed by the transmission of a high space temperature scan and then a quick deorbit. Okay, uh, actually, one thing I wanted to look at really quickly that I'll probably never show you. If I open up Lunar 1, do I not legitimately don't have, where's payload? Oh no. Okay, I know where I need to go with science. I didn't realize all this time the 1.25 meter fairing, the only reason I had access to it was because it was that contract. I thought I had it for legit, but the only fairing I have is the 0.625 meter fairing. Shoot, shoot, shoot. This is Moon R1. Moon R1 clearly was intended to go to the moon, but isn't going to go to the moon even though it is being built until I get the fairing unlocked. Okay, um... Interesting, that caught me off guard. I thought I had 1.25 meter fairings. All right, um... What do we have here? Recondition the launch pad. Oh, rocket sled's ready. If this goes terribly wrong, I can have Bill bail. He has the parachutes, you know, because all the Kerbals now have parachutes on them. Where's the button? I want to know where it is to get out of the command seat. Leave seat and then deploy parachute. So if this is looking bad, Bill's going to bail because now this isn't simulation mode any anymore. Okay, so SAS on. Uh, there's no sense of a throttle. We'll put this on chase mode. I really should have had this pointed out this way, now I'm thinking about it, but... Alright, Bill, uh, let's go. So, engine's on. These clamps. Whoa, 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 we're just going... Oh my god, stupid camera. Okay, there we go. We're good. We're gonna keep going up. We're gonna lose this. And now Bill is a pilot. Okay, follow that down, Bill. This is how this works. Okay, Jeb and Val all know how this works. We're going to pull out of this dive. And we're going to move. Whoa, bombs away. <laughs> we got to keep our speed up. We do not want to stall. That's what happened last time when we were in simulation. Okay, we're just going to go out this way. Actually, we can. Bill is going to show you, show Jeb and Val. So we got a lot of reasonable amount of altitude. No, we're not. We're just going to land here. I was about to go around to the runway again, but we're losing altitude too quickly. All right, Bill, you have this. You have this. Just keep that speed up. Good turn. Bill. No, you're getting cocky. Don't get, get a stick. Okay, there we go. Okay, speed up still. All right. Okay, Bill, you got this. You got this flare. Oh, whoa, 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 no! Oh, no! 
It did it! Oh, I broke the nose cone. But clearly, that doesn't matter. Ah, put it back on the feet. There we go. It was fine! Everything was fine. Yeah, I broke the nose cone out of there, but it didn't seem to think that was bad enough of an issue. So Bill did it! Bill is a pilot. Oh, Jebediah and Val need to be worried. Okay, we have completed the rocket sled contract. Oh, there's the haul the Airstream back. I got this one again. Have the Airstream at this altitude, this speed. It's pretty, pretty fast, but it might work. But that will give me my Airstream. That will give me the um, fairing, the 1.25 meter fairing. For my my rockets that have been unbuildable <laughs> i'm gonna grab that okay 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 oh that was a cheap way to get that wasn't it oh you know what else i could have looked at this is something i don't think i've really this prototype marketplace you can get in here and it allows you to buy stuff scroll down ahead of where you encounter it in the um Tech, tea, so tech tree. So, for instance, I haven't unlocked mm -hmm. fuel line tech yet, but if I wanted to pay, these are all pays. Cost me only 675 curb bucks, and I could have it. And similarly, if I pay 675 curb bucks, I could have a Sepatron. Um, I don't know. To me, that feels. feels kind of cheaty. Is it just me? I think it feels cheaty. Alright, where are we now in terms of what's coming up next? Powered lander tester is coming up next. I got nothing happening in the space plane hangar. No, I don't. That's okay. Alright. Powered lander tester and then right on its heels is Moonar 1, which is really what I want this episode to be about. And I should be able to launch it now that I have those fairings. But first, we've got this powered landing test. All right, so the game plan here is pretty simple. It's been a long time since you've seen something as tiny and little as this. I have a contract. There it is, Kerbin Powered Landing. I have a contract. Oh no, I might have botched this contract. I did. Oh my gosh, anyway, I'll get to it and then I'll explain how I botched it. Oh, this is lame. Okay, uh, the contract is to do a powered landing with some sort of probe or something. You gotta get up to at least 500 meters altitude, do a powered landing with, within 40 meters of the monolith, which you can just see over there on the horizon and then land safely. Unfortunately, one of the stipulations was to not have any aero parts, which I went, oh yeah, of course, you're not gonna have wings, we're not gonna fly something over there. But what did I do? I put on a fairing. And so the fairing counts as an aerodynamic part. Um, I'm assuming that if I deploy the fairing, that's still there, yeah. Okay, so, but you know what? We'll call this a test run. So this is gonna be a fail. Ah, dearie, dearie, dear. Uh, okay, well, let's do her anyway. So, uh, I'm gonna go towards the north, so launch. We're off. So this is just to get us to the altitude. I don't want to let's put this on here. I don't want to pitch over until I got some speed because the aerodynamic. And we'll pitch over that way. Okay, that should be that looks looking all right. We should be out of fuel. Out of fuel. Pitch that. Oh yeah, let's pitch that. And engines here. And get ready to land. Oh my gosh, this is looking amazing. Okay, let's slow down a bit. Slow down. Uh oh, bombs away. So here's my question. Lots of fuel. How come? Oh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Slow down, buddy. Okay, I'm going around. 
wrong way. <laughs> uh, okay, come on. Why are you being such a doofus head? There. Okay, we're going up, so that's bad. Okay. Get onto there, just land. It should be 40 meters easy. Sideways. Whoa. Oh, you doofus. You got too cute. I've got to be within 40 meters of it. I noticed that uh, I got excited and I'm going to use that as an excuse that it distracted me. <laughs> but all of a sudden that, that I had no aerodynamic parts once I lost the booster. There's the booster over there. Oh, what a mess. <laughs> okay. Oh, I will do a better job. Thankfully, it is a cheap rocket with no Kerbals aboard. That was going so well until I got too excited. <laughs> And now I got a whole pile of crap to clean up. Don't I? Oh yeah, there's a ton of crap over there. So we gotta send out the crew to, to go clean all this mess up. <laughs> okay, let's get to the Munar 1. Excellent. So this is the Munar 1. Let's get rid of that contract. That's not what it is. Clearly, Moon is going to be a target with this. I didn't just name that just for fun, of course. So we're gonna do a Moon flyby. That is one of our contracts. And one I just picked up, which allows me to fly this thing at all, is the um, Airstream Protective Shell. Uh, we got to haul it up. Uh, if we happen to hit this, get into this speed range between 1,290 meters per second and 1,690 meters per, per second between 20 and 23 kilometers, well, I'll be pretty happy. Even if it doesn't happen, I'm not going to be too upset because it's giving me the fairing that I needed to launch this thing. So we'll talk about the payload in just a little bit. You can see it is on one of my brand new hammer boosters. This is the hammer, then the R2 configuration with a upper stage that features my brand new torch engine as well. So exciting stuff. One thing that's going to make this I think more interesting is that I've yet to upgrade the tracking station so I do not have patch conics or maneuver nodes so uh, yeah that I we're just gonna to have to eyeball it and aim for the moon all we got to do is fly by though so no matter how close we get Aha, beautiful And this one and the R3 with three radial boosters is still under the 18 ton limit for that launch pad. If I went to four radial boosters, I go over the 18 ton limit. So right now we are flying on two Hammer SRBs. This is my first time using the Hammer SRB. I find it kind of funny that I'm all excited about the hammers. Like, look how big my boosters are. And these are like one of the early unlocks in the stock game. But, oh my goodness, this is making a big difference for my for my vehicle. Now, one thing when these detach is I couldn't get them not to crash into each other and blow each other up. So I didn't bother putting any parachutes on them, figuring that they're going to be in pieces anyway. So what's the point in covering them? So they're just going to, all the pieces will land in the ocean. Okay, so here we come to our first staging event. There they go, and boom, that's what they do. That one's still okay. The other one blew up, it looks like, entirely. Oh, well. Now we're on another hammer. So our second stage is another hammer. Chucking away. And I just love the way it's tracking the prograde vector so well. My other rockets had an... There was always kind of a little too much of an angle of attack affecting the effect efficiency of the ascent this one much 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 happier with yeah getting some heating effects I wish they kind of calm this down a little bit 
It always feels like I'm doing something wrong here. Here we go. Now we're on to our upper stage. Our mighty torch engine. Oh, and we just must have hit... Yes, we hit our target Apoapsis. So that fired very briefly. The thing I should also keep in track of is my data window. There is a fair amount of experiments cranked onto this, put onto this thing. Of course, it won't do any of them until it's appropriate for them to do so. Oh, 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 why did that happen? I don't know. Oh, whatever. It wasn't a big deal, but... I must have had the throttle on before I engaged the program. Might have been my, my sticky fingers. Okay, keep an eye on electricity, which has been my problem. But this shouldn't be a problem. This thing has batteries. This thing has solar. Okay, we can ditch the fairing now. Oh, it didn't obviously... I wasn't even looking, but it clearly... Whoops. It clearly did not satisfy this contract here. It never went green, so... I wasn't even watching it. That's how little I cared. But we'll do this one. Oh, we do have to get ourselves into low space around the moon. I didn't notice that, so... Okay. We can do that. Did I, I do have an engineer chip. Why am I doing it this way? Look at that. Engineer chip. Oh my gosh. I should probably talk about Kerbal Engineer a little bit en route. But I now have time to Apoapsis. That is really useful. I can do this from this view. Okay, that's good enough. All right. Uh, let's put this here. We do have solar panels, so we should be doing some... Uh, I still have 323 meters left in this upper stage, so I think I'm going to hang on to it. Um, so let's just talk a little bit about the probe. I should, I think I got the science all queued up, don't I? Yeah, it's still waiting to do a telemetry report. So I picked the lame one. There's also, I got a thermometer on here. It's waiting because we've done all the low. And, oh, and the Geiger counter. And it's waiting because I've done all the low orbit Geiger countery stuff. Come on. All right, so I don't know. The probe's pretty simple, I think. It's uh, built around the octo. Uh, let's you know. You know what? We'll talk about Kerbal Engineer later. Why don't we plan our attack of the moon? So here's our moon. I cannot select it. I cannot target it. I just got to kind of aim for it. To be honest, it might come back to the old school, <laughs> old school way of hitting the moon was to burn when the moon was just below Kerbin's horizon. So like if you look from here, when the moon is more in that position, that's about the right time to go. And what you're going to do, of course, is you're raising that apoapsis up to here. But during the time you're going, um, of course, the moon is moving. It takes about a day to get out to the moon, and the moon has an orbit or period of six days so it'll go about a sixth of the way around. So the moon is in this position, uh, probably about here's where it needs to go. So I need to be a little bit, or where I need to be, I need to be here in a day. <laughs> it's really what it comes down to. So I think I need to just go a little bit further, but we'll watch it from here. And if we botch this, we botch this. I think I have quite a lot of fuel though. Look at that. Let's get to the point where the moon is just a little bit below my my orbit. And the moon, of course, has an altitude of 12,000 kilometers. Let's push her program. I think I'm pretty much there. So all we got to do is get our apoapsis, but this will push this out to here. I like it. Yep, we're going to do it. So we're just going to, I'm going to do this not from map view, but from here so we can watch. Uh, got to get out to an apoapsis of 12,000 kilometers. This stage is clearly going to be put in a moment. And now we're on just a teeny tiny little ant engine. This. 
And as we're doing a flyby, once we have our altitude right, although we do want to get into low space, so might have to do some adjusting as we go. Not a monstrous thrust to weight ratio on this guy, but that's okay. We don't need it once you're in orbit. Let's call it 12,000 kilometers. Now, when we go back to map view, you can see I have no intercept. That's because the patch conics business is just flat out not working. I just realized I've gone past the 12,000 kilometers. Hmm. Let's leave it the way it is. I think this gives me a better... The 12,000 kilometers is from the center. The actual altitude of the moon is 11,400 kilometers because the radius has... Or the Kerbin has a radius of 600 kilometers. So that's why I'm actually past. But maybe that's not a bad thing. It'll give me some kind of hang time out here so that the moon can hit me. Okay, on to the normal vector so that once we are in the sun we can catch some rays. Do we have anything else coming up in Kerbal construction time? Uh, launch pads being reconditioned. Two days for the powered lander. You know what? I just, I'm going to stick with this. It's okay. Alright, so let's start time warping. There's our moon. And once we're in high space, I think we'll start getting some stuff. I would assume. Here we go. So... We're getting a telemetry report in high space. And we are getting a scan. And I just realized as well, I have not extended my thermometer. Or thermometer. Antenna. <laughs> Extend the antenna. This is actually the first use of the Communitron 16 antenna. Let's get out here in the sun so you can get a better look at it. There we go. This is the Communitron 16 antenna. I know it looks very much like the antenna that I've been using, but the antenna I have been using has been the Communitron 8, which comes with Kerbalism. It's a smaller version and lighter version of the Communitron 16, but as we were on our way out to the moon, I thought, I never did do the math of whether the Communitron 8 would be all right. I would just assume not. <laughs> so I'm gonna use the Communitron 16, which I do know works fine out towards the moon. Let's talk a little bit about Kerbal Engineer Redux. So this is where this information is coming from, and it's thanks to a little flight computer that is now attached to my probe right here that I have not been putting on because of my severe park cart limitations all the time in the BAB, but this is the first vessel to have this, and this provides the data that you're seeing here. And this is infinitely, infinitely, it's customizable to a high degree, not infinite, because you can only add on what you can add on. So um, if you wish, you can take, let's see, this is the HUD one. Let's edit that one just to show you what I mean. If I wanted to take some of these off, I simply have to hit remove. You can also change the order of them easy enough by moving them up and down. Not sure what this green button is. Oh, you can change the colors. Okay, I, I'm cool with the colors. <laughs> you can remove them. There's also tells you a bit about them. Like if you don't know what Delta V is, I think. Didn't it just, yeah, here it is. Tells you what that button does. And then up here, there's all kinds of other things that you can add as well. And these are divided into category. These are all the orbital bits of information. Then we have bits of information relative to the surface. We have information relative to the vessel. We have information if you're performing rendezvous. We have information as far as heat and thermal stuff goes. Uh, information about the body of which you are orbiting. And finally, miscellaneous. And clearly there's tons of information for what we're doing here today. What we have displayed is actually more than one. I mean, I got my current Delta V, Apoapsis height, and Periapsis height, and the time to get to them. Um, and over here, I have my altitude over the terrain. I guess there's no reason for me to have that anymore. Why don't I get into Kerbal Engineer? and take that away now that we have you know this feature I don't need this altitude over terrain so that is being removed uh, vertical speed horizontal speed the biome I'm over in the situation we'll keep that 
and I typically just add information as I need it. And for this mission though, what I've got is more than enough. All right, science is being transmitted. I'm pretty much done with the transmit high. But at some point here, we should be going into the moon's sphere of influence. And at that point, I need to make some adjustments to my vessel. Come on, we should be popping into the moon's sphere of influence. There it is, there it is, there it is. Oh my gosh. Stop, 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 stop. It's locked. What's going on? What's going on? Wait, wait, wait. My... There we go. Oh, I don't know what it was. I was... Pushed escape. I was... That was weird. Look at that encounter! For flying, you know, just eyeballing it, I'm pretty happy with that. Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lower our periapsis by, uh, let's see, we want to go radially inwards. Where is my radially inwards duber? Not that one. That one. Okay. Actually, we'll also burn a little bit retrograde too. I think that's probably the more efficient way to do it, though I don't think efficiency is going to be too much of an issue. Okay, and I want to look at my periapsis. I can look at it here, or I can look at it on Kerbal Engineer. And look at that, I don't know, 12-ish. Nice and close. Even a little lower. 10. I mean, I don't want to hit anything. There we go. 9, 9.5. That's cool. I am super de duper de pleased with this. Okay, yeah, we're going around retrograde, so my. Alright. Now we are getting some science here. We are. doing a. What are we doing here? Radiation scan, moon high. Telemetry report, moon high. Temperature scan, moon high. So all of my different science dubers are going away. I went with the telemetry, just, you know, you can you can set this probe to do one experiment. And I actually had a choice of three. I could do the mite, I could do the sight, which I haven't tried yet, or I could do the telemetry report. I went with telemetry just because it's the simplest and least taxing. Uh, in terms of electrical usages and transmissions rates too. I think to do those higher ones would be better to put something in orbit that could sit there and go over different biomes and stuff. Anyway, let's start making our way to the moon. Look at that. I am absolutely tickled pink about this. There. And I'm grabbing a lot of data. I still have a lot of hard drive space left, so that's good. And electricity is not a, a problem. 63% on the signal. Good thing I went with the Communitron 16 rather than the Communitron 8. I think I do have still a more powerful antenna still, but I want to. I, I, I think this is this is all right. We are going to get into a communication. Um, communication shadow of the moon at some point too. I'll take this opportunity to thank my Patreon patrons who really helped me out in producing these videos. If you are enjoying these videos, why not drop me a like or smash that subscribe button so you don't miss any. Low space. That's what I need for the contract to be complete. Oh, we have lost our signal. That's okay. No, our connection's not in progress, but we're still, are we still collecting data? Can we not collect data without a signal? Well, the telemetry is done. Or maybe it's all, oh, it's been all collected. It just needed to be transmitted, perhaps. My connection has timed out. It's gonna keep trying. <laughs> You're not going to get it for a while. There's kind of like a big rock in your way. Oh. What I want to do is get into low space to satisfy this contract.
Okay, we are in low space. But we have to transmit some data. Now, are we not collecting this even without a signal? I'm not convinced. Oh, yeah, we are. We're collecting it. So cool. We are going to get some low space science. And once we have a signal, we'll transmit it. So this, this condition should be met. Even if we don't have a signal by the time we're in out of low space. What we need to have happen is to have Kerbin pop up over the horizon. Come on, Kerbin. I'm going to do. Let's turn this to free. Yeah. Come on, Kerbin. Come on, Kerbin. Come on, Kerbin. We need Kerbin to pop up over the horizon. Kerbin. Kerbin. Come on, Kerbin. You've got to rise so I can transmit my data. Oh, 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 there we go. We've got our signal back. Tons and tons of data to transmit. None of this is biome specific, so that's cool. And we got all the ride home in which to transmit it in. Contract course is complete. Excellent. We collected all the high science we can. I wonder if we are going to get all the low science we can. We have 3.6 science from transmitting. We are now in high science. I'm not sure. Look at that radiation scan from space low. 10.7 science. I have no idea if I got it all. What was the... Doesn't really tell me. I don't think I got it all. That would be my guess. I'm going to just go until I am charging and I'm sure everything here is happy, happy. But then I'm going to just leave this. Actually, what I should do, because I have no idea what my orbit's going to be like once we exit out of here, should be pretty big. I shouldn't be intersecting Kerbin, but I should make sure. <laughs> Again, because of the lack of patch conics, what happens after I exit here? I don't know. I don't know what happens. But my theory is, I think we should be just in a pretty wide orbit after all of this. I'm not convinced of that. And I want to make sure. So we're going to time warp until we're outside of the moon's sphere of influence and then this thing has all the time in the world to transmit all of this lovely science back home bye bye moon we'll be back oh telemetry report from space high has been transmitted oh jeez I almost certainly had enough Delta V left for a capture. Uh, temperature scan from Space High. Oh well, we'll be back. I'm not sure this thing could have accomplished much more anyway. We are now getting our telemetry report from Space Low. 10.8 for the radiation scan. Oh, it doesn't matter if this thing's going to crash into Kerbin now because we're going to get all of this stuff away anyway. And there we go. That is all the science we have to transmit. Let's... Oh, we are we're away from the moon. So there's our orbit. <laughs> it's monstrous. Um, I'll just leave it. I don't know. It's still got... How much does it still have in it? It still has 355 meters per second. Ah, it's inclinations. I, I, You know, I should have put a little more thought into this. It's kind of hard to do without having a patch conics model, isn't it? But I don't think a Minmus encounter is going to be doable because of the inclination difference between the two. That's kind of too bad. Would have been fun to push this out a little bit, see if I can get Minmus. But anyway, we're going to leave it to its own devices. We're going back to the space center where we've a 78.2 science oh yeah this is gonna be a spending spree but given where we're at 
in this episode. I think I'm going to have to be leaving that spending spree to the beginning of the next episode. So in the meantime, I thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.